all welcome to service. I'm set for accelerated results this year. Thank you, Jesus, for our covenant liftings in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So we'll be calling ourselves to worship with Psalms 91. Because I dwell in the secret place of the Most High, I shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers. Another is will shall I trust. His truth shall be my shield and my buckler. I shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at my side, and ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. Only with my eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because I have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high my habitation. There shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. He shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. They shall bear me up in their hands, lest I dash my foot against a stone. I shall tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall I trample under feet. Because I have set my love upon him, therefore will he deliver me. He will set me on high, because I have known his name. I shall call upon him, and he will answer me. He will be with me in trouble. He will deliver me and honor me. With long life will he satisfy me and show me his salvation. So shall it be for every one of us and our family members in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for today. We thank you. This is our last week in the month of March, and we glorify the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hosanna in the highest. Let our King be lifted up. Hosanna.
your hands. Lift up your hands to the Lord. Give Him all the glory. Appreciate Him for bringing you here tonight. Thank Him for His faithfulness and His kindness to you tonight. Open your heart to Him and say, Lord, bless me. Open my eyes to see, my ears to hear. Speak to my spirit man tonight. Thank you, Lord. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. Our debt you paid, Jesus, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name. Father, we bless you tonight in Jesus' name. You may have your seats in God's presence. We bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I'm set for celebrated results this year. Thank you, Jesus, for my covenant lifting in Jesus' name. Good evening, everybody. I want to thank you, sir, for this privilege, for believing that I can do this. I thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Jude, and the entire pastorate of the church. And I give praise to God Almighty. Thank him for this opportunity to serve. Not because it's my comfort zone, but because we are called to serve. Hallelujah. The previous week, we studied the characteristics of kingdom servanthood, part two. And this week, we are looking at the rewards of kingdom servanthood. Hallelujah. The rewards of kingdom servanthood. And our anchor scriptures are Exodus chapter 23, verse 25. And it says, And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Amen. Let's look at Luke chapter 18, verse 29 to 30. Luke chapter 18, verse 29 to 30. It says, Jesus said, I assure you that everyone who has given up house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will be repaid many times over in this life and will have eternal life in the world to come. Praise God. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says, we all know it, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. So quickly, we move on to the introduction, and it reads, God operates a reward system. There is nothing we do for the sake of Christ and his kingdom that goes unrecorded, unnoticed, or unrewarded before God. We have heard many times pastors say the recorder is the rewarder. God has a book of remembrance, and he takes note of every single labor of love that we render in the kingdom. Take note of the word every, because there is no act of service that is insignificant before God. There is no labor of love that is too small before the Lord. Every act of service, God takes note of. Amen. And God rewards service. So the scripture for the introduction, Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 to 24. It says, and whatsoever ye do... Do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Praise God. Can I have the New Living Translation? Is it possible? And also we'll look at Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10. But Colossians chapter 3 first verse 24, 23 and 24. Anybody with New Living Translation can read. Okay, it says, verse 23. Amen. 24. 
as your reward. The master you are serving is Christ. The master you are serving is Christ. Work willingly at whatever you do, knowing that you will receive from the Lord an inheritance as a reward. Knowing that the master you are serving is not your pastor. The master you are serving is not your unit head. The master you are serving is not your brother or your sister by your side, but it is Christ Jesus alone. That should inform our attitude towards kingdom service. The minute we begin to forget that God is the one receiving our service, that is when issues begin to come up. That is when we allow strife to take over. That is when we begin to be laid back. But when we keep in the forefront of our mind that Jesus Christ, the maker, the king of Zion, is the one we are serving, it will inform our attitude towards service. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 6 verse, 12, verse 10 says, For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown towards his name. And it is in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Notice the later part of that verse 10 says, You minister to the saints and you still do minister. Meaning that serving one another in the kingdom is also an act of service to Christ. Hallelujah. I don't know if you got that. Serving your brethren is an act of service to Christ and it honors the Lord. The New Living Translation of that same verse says that for God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers as you still do. Most times we feel service is just the activity rendered in church like cleaning choir ushering and all that but walking in love with to other brethren showing the love of God to other believers it is an act of service to Jesus Christ and the Bible says he will not forget another scripture that substantiates that is in Matthew chapter 25 verse 40 Matthew 25 verse 40 says and the king shall answer and say unto them verily I say unto you inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren you have done it unto me what you do to your brethren in the house of God you are doing to Christ whether good or bad may the Lord give us understanding so that's another scripture that shows us that serving the brethren by showing love is an act of service directed to the Lord Jesus so when we are kind when we are allow when we allow the Holy Spirit to flow through us through acts of service and kindness not just to your leaders even to those that may not you, the world may not feel deserves it. First timers, new converts, the least of my brethren is what the Bible says. You have done it to me. So brethren, there is no act of service in the kingdom that is too small. And no one in the kingdom of God is exempt from service. Amen. Nobody in the kingdom of God is exempt from service. The minute you accept Jesus into your life, you have been called into kingdom service. So nobody here has an excuse to sit idle in God's kingdom. Praise the Lord. And for kingdom service, there are many benefits, which is what we're looking at today. The rewards of kingdom service transcend to different areas of our lives. It's not limited to spiritual blessings. When we serve in the kingdom of God, it's not just spiritual edification we get. It's not just more grace that we get. But we get, it's not just the blessings that pertain to your inner man alone. Rather, God rewards both now and in eternity. Both your spirit and your body receive a reward for serving God. The rewards of kingdom service are all encompassing. And today we are going to find out what they are and the criteria to receiving them. Because guess what? It is not every service that is worthy of a reward. Praise the Lord. So we're moving quickly to the rewards, the main topic, the rewards of kingdom service. And we'll be looking at one of the anchor scriptures, which was Exodus 23, verse 25. I would like that in the New Living Translation, if it is possible. Exodus chapter 23, verse 25. Before then, I will look, talk on Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25. Because the first 
reward there under that topic says divine provision. And we have Hebrews 11.25. And that's the scripture that says, He that watereth shall be watered. Meaning when you are giving, when you are serving, supernaturally you are provided for. You will be watered. Meaning in your time of need, provision will be made for you. Praise God. So that is one aspect of kingdom service that cannot be altered. If you water, you will be watered. If you serve, you will be refreshed. That's, it's as simple as that. So Hebrews 23, sorry, Exodus 23, 25. Okay, I'm going to read it. And it says, you must serve only the Lord your God. If you do, I will bless you with food and water. And I will protect you from illness. So that leads us to B, divine health and protection. The Bible says, I will protect you from illness. It says, there will be no miscarriage or infertility in your land. And I will give you long, full lives. So we see there, numbers, letter C, it says preservation for your seed. Meaning that there will be no miscarriage means that your seed will not die. Your offspring will not die. You will not lose your offspring. The, the works of your hands, whatever proceeds from you. And now offspring now is not just limited to biological offspring. Whatever it is that comes forth from you, be it a business, whatever it is that proceeds from you is also your seed. Not just your physical children. The Bible says he will preserve and protect when we engage in kingdom service. Hallelujah. D says long, full lives, prolonged life. And we can see that in 2 Kings chapter 6, chapter 20, verse 1 to 6. And because of time, I'll just talk about it. It's the story of Hezekiah. And my emphasis is on verse 3 of that scripture. Where Hezekiah said, I have served you faithfully. You know, he made his case known to God and he wept with bitter tears. He had a case because he knew he actually engaged in service. And verse 5 says that God said, I will heal him. You, you know, the, the enemies were not going to destroy him. So that speaks of deliverance and healing. All because Hezekiah had a claim that he had served God. So we can see at once he received his healing and he received preservation from the enemy's camp because he had a claim of service to God. Can you stand before God today and say, I know I have served you faithfully in so so and so department or at so so and so point in time? That's something we should always strive to have because God has a book of remembrance. We also should keep record of our service to God. Hallelujah. Number three says, serving God and the interest of his kingdom entitles you and I to spiritual supplies. And this supplies delivers us from lack and want. Let's look at Job chapter 36 verse 11. Okay, without wasting time. It says that if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. There's not too much explanation here. The Bible is very clear. If they obey and they serve What's the result? They will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Many of us might be wondering, but I know people who are serving God and they're not in prosperity and pleasure and this and that. Remember we said at the beginning, not every service is worthy of a reward. Towards the end, we're going to see the attributes or the criteria that makes one service deserving of God's reward. Praise God. Number four says, earthly rewards and eternal life. Those are one of the that's one of the benefits of kingdom service. We receive reward here on earth and in the life after. That's, uh, the scripture is Luke chapter 18, verse 29 and 30. Okay. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that had left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the sake of the kingdom who will not be repaid many times over. What this scripture is saying, that there's nothing that, there's nobody who has given anything. Because it listed house, wife, children. Just take it that there's nobody who gives anything for the sake of the kingdom, who will not be repaid. Whatever it is, your time, whatever resource you have, nothing that you give to God will ever go unrewarded. God is not a fraudster. He will not use and dump. What he, you give him in service, he will ensure that you are repaid back in full. And the Bible says, in this life and in the life after. So whatever you give to God in service, never consider it a loss. Never consider it a loss. See it as an investment. 
that can never go wrong because God pays and he pays well. It can never suffer loss. And another thing about kingdom service is that there is great gain both for your past, for your present, and for your future. When you become involved in kingdom service, it redeems your past. I don't know how you feel when you see someone who has lived all their life not knowing Christ, you know, just for themselves, and one day they are convicted by the Holy Ghost and they begin, you know, they, are, they become on fire for God, they start working. It gives joy to behold. When you think of it and look at their past, it, it discounts any claims the past has on them. It's a beautiful thing to see. You know, it redeems the years of idleness and all the things they were doing before once they begin kingdom service. So, Matthew chapter 20, verse 1 to 16, it's not in the outline, but it's the story of the servants that worked at the 11th hour and they were paid the same thing as those that started at the beginning. So, the important thing is start serving God. Start serving God. The hours they wasted at the beginning of the day did not count against them. They served faithfully and they received the wages of a faithful servant. Praise God. Number five says, increase, increase and every other blessing desired. That's a very popular scripture. Matthew 6, 33. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing shall be added unto you. Now, brethren, what constitutes every other thing for you may not be the same thing that is every other thing for the next person. And so, peradventure, there are some things you already have. Once you engage fully in kingdom service, those things will be increased, multiplied unto you. And then if you didn't have at all and you start, they will be added unto you. So we can see that there is no loss. Once you put God's kingdom first and his righteousness, increase comes your way. And I see increase coming our way tonight in the name of Jesus. Number six says, no one serving God is permitted to be unfruitful and, or cast their young. We saw that earlier from Exodus chapter 23. So that's to say that kingdom servanthood secures our posterity, our longevity. It gives us health and vitality. Remember Moses, the Bible says, as of the time he was 120 years, he was still serving and his eyes did not grow dim. His natural vigor did not go weak. This means that he didn't die from complications of old age. That's what it means. He went to sleep and transited to glory because he had finished his assignment. That's what genuine kingdom service can do for a man. You are not affected by the natural laws of health, of nature, because you are engaged in kingdom service. Praise God. Furthermore, kingdom servanthood entitles us to supernatural joy because the Lord strengthens his servants with joy. Let's see Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. Then he said unto them, go your way, eat the fat and drink the sweet and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto the Lord. Neither be ye sorry. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. Praise God. So the Lord energizes his servants by giving them joy. If you're lacking joy, check yourself. Am I serving God? Because if you're engaged in active service, he renews your strength. And the Bible says it is through joy. It says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Nothing else but the joy of the Lord. So if you're lacking joy, begin serving God. It gives joy, it gives fulfillment, and he will make sure that you are always energized to do his bidding. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 1 to 6, verse 5 and 6. It says, He that goes forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come back again, rejoicing, bringing the sheaves with him. Brethren, it's not always easy to serve in the kingdom. I, will, I must tell you the truth. Sometimes it's painful to the flesh. Walking in love, your flesh irks. It's painful sometimes to sow that seed, to make that sacrifice, to deny yourself of those conversations you would have had because you need that time to do something else for the kingdom. It may not always be easy fulfilling the requirements for kingdom service, but the word of God is assuring us that it is always with joy that we will bring forth the harvest. Praise God. And so as we labor in his vineyard, planting seeds of service, the Bible says we shall come back rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. So never mind the times of seed sowing, where it's painful, where it's a struggle. 
the Lord is taking notes. And in the day of your harvest, it shall be with rejoicing. That is the word of the Lord. So it shall be for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Number eight says, spiritual authority and protection. And that is seen in Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. I love that scripture. We always use it to pray. It says, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. It says, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Another version says, their vindication is of me, says the Lord. Says the Lord. Hallelujah. So these benefits, okay, I'm going to read it from another version. It says, but in that coming day, no weapon turned against you will succeed. You will silence every voice raised up to accuse you. These are the benefits enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. Their vindication will come from me. The Lord has spoken. So what is vindication? It's an act of clearing somebody from being guilty. It's an act of clearing somebody of blame, exonerating someone. And the Bible says, their vindication shall come from me. So that means that God takes up the role of your defense as your attorney as your lawyer so whenever the accuser of the brethren and his minions show up whenever they come with the accusations jesus stands as your advocate when you are his kingdom servant jesus rises up to defend your case when you are engaged in the service of his kingdom for me that's enough incentive to engage in kingdom service that there's somebody who will always speak for you who will always defend you many believers don't have that privilege because the bible says it their vindication is of me it is their heritage as servants of the Lord. So believers who are not serving do not have this privilege. And brethren, God's word cannot be broken. It is not a lie. That's why we see believers going through so many things. There are many people in the church, Christians, they are not engaged in kingdom service. They are not doing anything for the sake of the gospel. Sunday in, Sunday out, and that's as far as it goes. And then challenges come and it looks like, oh, the word of God is not working. I'm a child of God. But are you a kingdom servant? Our salvation story does not end in accepting Jesus and then that's it, we sit, we sit back. The Bible says, woe to him that is at ease in Zion. Here, Bakaya. Woe to him that is at ease in Zion. Woe is like a curse. We cannot be complacent in the kingdom of God and expect the benefits to come to us. No. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Number nine says, God's approval. That is one of the benefits of kingdom service. You are approved of God. And we see that in Matthew chapter 25, verse 21, where it says, His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Another version says, The master was full of praises. He says, You have been faithful over a few. Like I said, it's not in the volume of the service, but the faithfulness. He says, You've been faithful over a few. I will make thee ruler over many. Enter thou into the rest of thy Lord. So God approves of those who serve well. And you know what? God does not wait till the end of age to approve you. As you are serving him daily, he's nodding his head. He's approving you for more. He's approving you for the next level. He's approving you for increase. The Bible says we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Brethren, those people are cheering us. Whenever you are doing what you ought to do, there's a cloud of witness that is cheering for you, urging you, encouraging you. I think it's somewhere in Proverbs. The Bible says we are so... We are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. They are watching, encouraging you. Go on. You can do it. Hallelujah. So God approves of his kingdom servants, not just in the life after, but even while we are here. He's nodding in approval. Yes, that's my son. That's my daughter. I pray we always have that desire to make God smile. Sometimes I just feel like I want God to look at me and, and be happy. You know how you feel when a child is misbehaving? You look and you, you shake your head and you wonder, where did I go wrong? I don't want God to have that impression of me. Think about it. Wouldn't you want God to look at you and say, ah, I, I made something when I made this my daughter? Hallelujah. Number 10 says, transfer of grace and mantle. It says, for every Moses, there is a Joshua. And I'll also add that for every Elijah, there is an Elisha. So kingdom service operates a succession plan. God never leaves vacancy. He always has a plan to fill up every position of service that exists in the kingdom. Hallelujah. 
and the choice is always made from among those who are already serving. God will not go outside to look for who has no idea of what's going on. No. He will look within. Who are the faithful ones within to transfer this grace, to move to who has passed their test, who is ready for the next level of service. This means that you win God's trust in continuity of the kingdom when you are a kingdom servant. Why? Because it will be easy for grace to be transferred to you because you are already serving. And we have examples, Joshua and Moses, Jesus and his disciples, Elijah and Elisha. Now that scripture there, 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1 to 9, is a very loaded, it, it gives us the, the, a blueprint for how to receive grace that we covet from the lives of those who are above us, who God has placed over us. And it's a long read, but I, so I'm, I, we know the story. Before Elijah was taken up, Elisha wanted something from him. He wanted a double portion of the anointing that Elisha was carrying. So that's in 2 Kings chapter 2. I'm just going to extract a few verses from there. It will help you. It has a lot of information in it. So 2 Kings chapter 2. So from that story, there are certain things that we need to be mindful of if we are seeking grace or a mantle transfer or something. We are coveting a grace from the life of our leaders or whoever. And the first one is focus, the focus of Elijah, of Elisha. We can see that in verse 1. No, in verse 2. Where he said, and Elijah said unto Elisha, stay here for the Lord has told me to go to Bethel. But Elisha replied, as surely as the Lord lives and you yourself, I will never leave you. Elisha was focused. He refused to shift his gaze from Elijah. The second one is watch your tongue. Those whom you are serving under, those whom you are desiring something from, a grace, a mantle, whatever it is, you need to watch your tongue where they are. And that is seen in verse 3. It says, the group of prophets from Bethel came to Elisha and asked him, do you know that the Lord is taking your master away from you today? Of course, I know, Elisha said, but be quiet about it. Those prophets were looking for discussion. Let's hear what he has to say. Probably they're expecting Elisha to say, nah, yes, yeah, so, you know, and then just some idle talk about the, the, his prophet, about his leader, about uh, Elijah. But Elisha did not give them that opportunity. He said, yes, but be quiet about it. That's something we need to be mindful of. Don't talk about the, one, the anointing that you, are, that you are coveting. You may not talk about it, but even the person carrying it, just keep your mouth quiet where that person is. It is not for you to analyze the personality. So yeah, he's anointed, but, you know, we need to be conscious of these things. Hallelujah. God told me something a while ago. He says, you lose virtue when you speak too much, when you talk a lot. And that's why the Bible says, in the multitude of, of words, there is, sin is not lacking. You lose virtue when you engage in too much talk. Be quiet about some things you're praying about. Everybody mustn't know. May the Lord give us understanding. So the third one is commitment. And that we can see in verse 4. It says, Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has told me to go to Jericho. But Elisha replied again, As surely as the Lord lives and you yourself live, I will never leave you. Elisha was committed. He was loyal to Elijah. You can't have these qualities and, and the mantle will not be transferred. Everything in the kingdom is principle-based. You cannot be committed and you will not reap the benefits of that anointing. The fourth one is resist distraction, and that's in verse 5. Then the group of prophets, and mind you, this group of prophets, they were prophets, meaning that they were also believers. So don't expect distractions will come just from unbelievers outside, even from the prophets, fellow believers in the church. So we need to be sensitive. The Bible says they that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So let the Lord lead. Let he, let's, let's, let's develop, let's pray for discernment rather. Because the enemy will not always come with horns and he entered Peter. Peter was a disciple. So let's be sensitive. Praise God. Number five, which is the last, is seen in verse nine. When they came to the other side, Elijah said unto Elisha, tell me what I can do for you before I'm taken away. And Elisha replied, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit and become your successor. So for mantle to transfer, for grace to be transferred, we need to desire it. 
we need to covet, we need to ask for it. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Praise the Lord. Number 11 is honor. That is one of the benefits, one of the rewards of kingdom service, honor. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 18. I like the TPT version, so that's the one I'm going to read. It says, tend an orchard and you will have fruits to eat. Serve the master's interest and you'll receive honor that is sweet. The Bible is amazing. So it's self-explanatory. Serve the master's interest. Who is our master? Our Lord Jesus. Serve his interest, the things that concern him. His kingdom, his people. Those are his interests, souls. Things that, con things that are of interest to him. Serve his interests. And he says you will receive honor that is sweet. Brethren, the only way to honor is through service. There might be other ways, but for the kingdom of God, you cannot avoid service. You cannot. You cannot be in the kingdom and avoid service. No. Do you know some people were cast into hell because they didn't serve? One of the parables, yeah. They were cast into outer darkness because they refused to serve. That will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. Philippians chapter 2 verse 9. Wherefore God also hath exalted him and given him a name which is above every other name. We all know our Lord Jesus came and served the purpose of redemption, the Father's will, and we saw how God honored him. He was given a name that is above every other name. Till today, Jesus is the most, you know, the only exalted one. All because he humbled himself. He came and he served. Hallelujah. Now we're going to move into the requirements for kingdom service. Like I said, it is not every walk that will be rewarded, unfortunately. As harsh as it may sound, that's the fact, that's the reality. Not every work will be rewarded. I heard someone say that you are only rewarded for what you were asked to do. And that scared me. You only paid for the work you were asked to do. That's why the issue of purpose is important. And even people say, what's my purpose? They say, okay, start from the one you know, which is we are called to point others to the Lord. Start from somewhere. Start by the basic ones, and as you progress, God will make it clear what your specific assignment is. But there is no excuse for anyone to sit idle. So, there are criteria that must be met for the kingdom, for kingdom service to qualify for reward. And that is that service, kingdom service needs to be genuine. It says it needs to be sincere. And it must meet certain requirements to qualify for reward. In other words, God will try our works. And that is seen in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13. That's a very serious scripture. It says, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. It says here, in this other version I have, every man's work shall be made manifest. Okay, it's the same version. Of what sort it is. We'll talk more about that towards the end of the outline. So the first criteria for receiving reward for service in the kingdom is the right heart. Every time we serve in the house of God, understand that you are serving God. I started with that. You are serving God. That was from Colossians. And God sees the heart with which you are serving. God knows when you're serving because, ah, let them not say or let them say. God sees all these things. Man may see outwardly that you're engaged in activity and service, but only God sees and knows your heart. And we can see that in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, when David was about to be, was it David or Saul? And he sa it says, don't look at his outward appearance, for I've rejected him. So man looks at the outward, but God looks at the heart. So what's most important is for God to testify of you that, yes, you are serving and you are serving well, not any man. So let's always seek to get God's accolades, God's approval, and not that of man. Let's seek to get the applause of the Father and not that of any man. Praise God. So when God has that testimony of you, you may not be in the limelight, you may not be on the pulpit, you may not be seen. But when God has need for a man, he will come after you. If he sees you are faithful in the little you are doing, no matter what it is, when God is in need for someone, for a higher position, for something more glorious, he will come after you like he did for David. David was faithful in tending the sheep. And when it was time to look for a king, God found him. The Lord will find us faithful in our work in Jesus' name. 
There's a charisma and character of service that, God's reward, that God rewards, not just any service. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, it says, Let every man give as he proposes in his heart, not grudgingly. So one of the charismas or characters of service is that we should be cheerful in doing it. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. We know that service is an act of giving. You're giving of yourself, of your time, of your resources, of everything that you have, depending on what, where you're serving. So let's do it with a joyful heart. Let's do it with a joyful heart. Let's remember that God loves a cheerful giver. Okay, so if our service is from a place of grudging, unfortunately, there will be no reward for that. It's not about faith service, but kingdom service first begins in the heart. So like I said, it's not the big things. It's in the faithfulness of whatever it is, no matter how small. It's in our mindset. It's in our heart. Hallelujah. So the quality of service is also one of the criteria. What's the quality of the service you're giving to God? Is it, it, is, it should be one of love. It should be one that is born from joy. Are you serving God in reverence? Now, I told you we'll go back to this. So 1 Corinthians 3.13 is now where I'm going to focus on in terms of the quality of our service. So what is the quality of your service? Do you take your service lightly? The day God gave me this revelation, I felt like I had been wasting my time. Let me give you an example. If you're called to serve, maybe to teach the children on a particular Sunday or something, do you take the time to prepare? What is the value that you place on that assignment? Do you procrastinate the preparation and then that morning you just read up and say, okay, let me just use head knowledge and then just go and give them something? Do you deliver half-baked or substandard service to God? Do you relegate the parameters of kingdom service to the background and, you know, then just hurry up something and just present? The preparation for service determines the value, the weight of that service, what you put into it. A work that is made, presented to God, haphazard preparation, just tied here and there, will not stand the test of fire. Because there is no blood in that sacrifice. There is no effort in that sacrifice. You treated it with levity. It didn't carry weight before you. You were profane in your service. Just like Esau that took lightly his birthright. He didn't value the things of the kingdom. Such works will not stand the test of time. Whatever you are called to do, the value you place on it is important to God. It, war, it determines if your works will pass the test of fire. When you are called to do something, how do you approach it? What emphasis do you put on it? How do you prepare for it? Do you take time and do you see it as this is God entrusting me with something? I need to take time to prepare. I need to see what his will is for this. What does he want me to say? What does he want me to do? Or is it just business as usual, a religion, a duty? Such works that are rendered with haphazard organization, feeling like, let me just be there to present it, will not stand the test of fire on that day. The Bible says, every man's work, of what sort it is, what sort is your service? Of what weight, of what quality is the service you are rendering to God? When you stand out here to receive the offerings of people, how are you standing? As are you, do you see that I'm receiving the offerings of the people of God for the Father? How do you see your office? Do you place value on it? In conclusion, it says, indeed, God, indeed serving God is the master key to live to a life of fulfillment. And in this world and in eternity, you cannot genuinely serve God and die in mockery and reproach. Whenever you carry the mantle of service, you are carrying a crown of honor. It's like you are carrying God's signet ring. You are carrying a letter of authorization from God. When you serve the master, you draw from the benefits that flow from the master naturally. When you are about kingdom service, kingdom resources will flow naturally to you. That's just the way it works. The things that belong to the master overflow to you by virtue of your service to him. I want to quickly share a funny testimony I shared with my sister once. 
I liked to sing before, but I couldn't sing. Back home in Nigeria, I was in the choir. But to tell you how bad I was, there was, in, there was this rehearsal that we had, and there was a song they wanted to, to do, and, it said, and somebody suggested, ah, let Sister Glory do the song. This Sister Glory you are singing now. And the, and the choir director said, you will stand up on the chair for that suggestion. That's to show you how bad I was at singing. But I didn't mind, I was there, I was one of the back, I used to back up and all that, you know, to fill up the choir number. <laughs> so we had this program, a camp meeting, and then I had a car by the grace of God, and our overall music um, director, Pastor Shalom is her name, she, um, some of us might know her, she needed to be transported to and fro to the program every day, and I said, ah, Pastor Shalom, I'll take you out. So every day I was coming to pick her from her room and drop her in the venue. After that, I'll take her home. Sometimes I will come and wait for her because she's not ready and all that. And honestly speaking, I feel that, I believe that the, there was something in her I was coveting. She was a, she's a worshiper. And I used to look at her with so much, I was like, oh, wow, Pastor Shalom. You know, but after that act of service, honestly, the heavens opened over me. I don't know what she released over me. I mean, that used to, if I, you know, for, for the choir director to say, stand up on the chair for suggesting Sister Glory should sing, you know, that would let you know how I was. But something opened instantly from that act of service. For three days, I served that woman. I was driving her to and fro. And to the glory of God, I see some of the things I coveted in her in my life. Hallelujah. So the things that belong to the master flow to you by virtue of service. And so to everyone online and on land, you know, hearing me, I just want to encourage you in the name of Jesus to give yourself to God in service. There is security in service. That is what we have been saved to do, to serve Jesus. There are many things that God cannot do with a man who, is, who he does not find useful. So no matter how small, serve faithfully. No matter what it is, serve faithfully. It pleases God when we do this. Let God look at you and be, and be proud. I pray and I trust God for fresh grace upon every one of us here tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. Hallelujah. I thought you were clapping some more for Jesus. That was a word from heaven well delivered. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Uh, thank you, Sister Glory, for the testimony, the powerful. I never believed that you could be a bad singer before. I will never believe that until Jesus come. You know, but that's what God can do with anyone who makes themselves available. Uh, now I can sing a little bit and I told you the very first time I stood before like 500 people my feet were wobbling and uh, I took the song North and another one went South. It was like and they clapped so much and encouraged me. At the time I finished, I said, wow, I think I did a good job. When I listened to it myself, I covered my face. You know, but that's what God can do with anyone who is faithful. I'll just summarize and say three things or so, and then we'll go to take questions. Number one, please understand that the service is unto God. The king in this dominion is God. Kingdom, king, dominion, king, dominion. The king in this dominion is who? God. And think about it. Do you think you can give anything to God and the God who made all the beautiful things that we we'll see on this earth, you think you will give him anything and we accept it? Please help me. You think you will give him any wishy-washy kind of service and he will take it from you and say, well done, good and faithful servant. No. God is a God of class. Your service must be class. Your heart must be pure. Your service must be clean. Many works will be burnt by fire, just like we read from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13. Any wishy work. I've been in a company before where the quality control, before they set any product out, it must pass through quality control. If they say no, it is no, it goes back to factory for the work. And I can tell you, so many work that we do should be rework. There will be a no. Say no, burn this one by fire. God forbid that your work be burned by fire. 
So do you know what we can do? The best thing we can do is to up our service. The quality must be there. Up the quality of your service and my service to God. And number two thing tonight to note. No service, no reward. Kenneth Copeland said something. And he said, one day the Holy Spirit told him to tell a man, ask him, that this man has been asking me questions about reward. Ask him if General Motors paid him dividend last year. So he asked the man, did General Motors pay you dividend last year? The man was lost. He said, General Motors, I didn't work for them. Number two, I'm not even a shareholder. Why would they pay me dividend? I don't know if that tells us a story. If you are not a shareholder in any company, no matter what you know to do, you won't get a dividend. If you are not an employee in a company, no matter how nice you are, you will not get a salary. Remember, there is salary, there is bonus. Salary is for doing what you should do. Bonus is for going above it. There is kingdom salary, there is kingdom bonus. Which one are you getting? To qualify for kingdom salary, you must be working. Your hand must be on the plow. And to qualify for kingdom bonus, you must exceed the expectation of what you are asked to do. That's how God rewards. And brethren, these things, there is really nothing that you and I can do about it. And there is one more point I'm going to make and then we'll take questions. Joshua succeeded Moses. But note that Joshua was not one of the 70 elders ordained by Moses. Joshua was the boy of Moses that carried his bag. Yet, when God was going to appoint the next leader of his people, he said, that's the boy you should take. The boy who serves. Many people love title. You know, we are the elders of <laughs> the children of Israel. We are the elders. Elder number one. Yes, I'm here with the badge, big badge. Listen, there is no entitlement in title. Title ties people down, block their eyes, block their access to rewards. It is not about your title. Would you harass God with your title? You know, I'm elder, I'm deacon, I'm archbishop. So God has come. He looks at you and says, look at you. Look at your heart. Look at where your heart is. So there is no entitlement in title. Title ties people down. It ties them down. So don't look for title. Joshua did not look for title. He was the boy of Moses that carried his bags, that poured water in the hand of Moses, that washed his feet, that takes his things, runs to and fro. And you remember, actually, when there was a battle, it was Joshua who went to war. And Aaron and all held up the hand of Moses. But Joshua was the one on the ground that did the battle. He was in service. And so such a person could not be forgotten. I remember my days in college and I, I keep telling this story. I was a, I just came in, I just loved God, I was just serving him. From nowhere my name was called General Secretary of the Christian Union. I, I, I didn't desire the title. I had no, no, no desire at all. I was in a very big church back in Nigeria, in Canaan land. And one day on the altar, without talking to anybody, my name was called out of 50,000 people. They were looking for 13 people to represent one person per industry. And, you know, God's servant wanted to set up uh, the, the endowment fund for Covenant University. My name was called from the altar without connection to anybody, without talking to anybody. Why? Your heart. See, God is the father of hearts. 
When your service is from the heart, he reads your heart. He rewards what's in your heart. So, brethren, please, let's take this very beautiful, well-presented outline. I sent it to those online as well. It's in the uh, Joy Overflow Facebook stream, the Bible study outline. And for those of us who have our names in the database, I've sent it to everyone, those who are online. Please go through these materials. They help you. Tune your service. Certain qualities were mentioned of service that are acceptable. Focus. Watch your tongue. Commitment. Do you know that many will walk and walk and walk and with their mouth they scatter the walk? Say the wrong thing. You start all over. The, the clock will reset to zero. I don't know why my leader always sent me to go and stand there and collect offering when I should be in the front where you know, God's servant and the pastor sit. I want to sit near there every time. But he will send me to go to the back. He said I should go to the back, back, back. Kaya Please understand the, the, the attribute of the one we are working for. He doesn't look at the face. It's the heart. And your heart reports directly to him. Resist distraction. Desire. Convert the grace. Ask for it. Let your heart and your mouth work together. Keep them as one. Don't let your mouth say something else and your heart is doing something else. May the Lord help us. So questions, if you have questions from uh, online, from online questions, we'd like to take those questions right now. Any questions? Zizaha prakataya kata. Lambido shambo do hante yaka. Kalire debo. Zuza letere diakata. Lift up your hand and begin to take grace for service. Lord, I receive grace for service. I want you to pray from the bottom of your heart. Lord, I receive grace. It's not what people see about you. No, it's what God sees about you. It's what he sees about you. It's what he records about you. The recorder is the rewarder. The recorder is the rewarder. Jesus, hando rabadabaya. In klo parakatata katahase. Is the radialo homundia ne padanta. Ma samba harodo koteta. Zuza bede heteya. I receive grace, Lord, for a hearty service. A heart full service. A heart filled service, a service from my heart, Lord, straight from the heart. In the name of Jesus, I receive that grace, Lord. Thank you, Father. I give you praise and glory in Jesus' precious name. We have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. May you be filled with the Spirit of the Lord for service. May the zeal of the house of the Lord consume you. May your mouth and your heart work together. May you not scatter the work of your hand by the word of your mouth. In the name of Jesus, every mouth that is running everywhere, I put it back to order in the name of Jesus. I say the Lord will be with your mouth. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. That prayer we need to pray and we're going to take the communion. The Lord can correct your mouth. The Lord can do what? Correct your mouth. See, let me give us one kingdom secret. The blood can make any correction. The blood of Jesus. It can correct any anomaly anywhere. Whether in your heart, whether in your mouth, whether in your hand, wherever, whatever anomaly, Jesus Christ by his blood can correct it. Because the life of the flesh is where? In the blood. What you want to see in the, your body, your flesh, is controlled from the blood. It's controlled for the blood. And when the blood of Jesus Christ comes in you, the Bible says they overcame by the blood. You need to understand the importance of that. They overcame by the blood. I win by the blood. I am controlled by the blood. I am put in order, back in order by the blood. Everything by the blood. I make progress. So tonight, we are faced to face with the flesh and the blood of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to read to us from John chapter 6, verse 58. It says, this, everyone point to this. 
This one is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did its manna and are dead. He that, let's read that past, last part together. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. So this bread has the capacity to make you live. What does it mean to live? It doesn't say exist. You know, some people are existing while others are living. Do you know the difference? Somebody who is existing is just alive. No goal, no vision. Why are you doing this? I'm not just, uh, just, just uh, no motivation. No motivation. But this one says you shall live. In other words, it will communicate life into you. The very life of God. Zoe. The very life of God. The, the, what makes God God? I love God. Sometimes I spend time just looking at the face of God and thinking about the majesty of God. So that same life enters into you. Stretch forth your hands to the table. Say, as I partake of this, Lord, let your very life that make you bubbly, that makes you God, enter into me. Put me on my feet. Drive me. Make me drive you. Drive me into excellence. Drive me into everyday living for you that I will do only excellent things. I will walk only your walk. I will do your will only in the name of Jesus. Every part of my body shall receive that life. It shall flow through me in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless this flesh and blood of Jesus. And say tonight... Let every manner of corrections take place. Correct our mouth. Correct our heart. Correct our hands. Keep us in line with your word. To do your will with zeal. In the name of Jesus. And serve in a way that we will be rewarded. And our works shall not be burnt. Let that life flow as we partake of the flesh and blood of Jesus. And I pray for anyone that is sick online, online, wherever you are, if you are sick, just make sure you are partaking of this flesh and blood. If there is sickness in any part of your body, take a remnant of that blood, rub it all over and command the devil to get out and say, I overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of my testimony. Lord, so shall it be. We overcome tonight by the blood, by this blood of Jesus and by the word of our testimony. We shall testify of your faithfulness, of the healings, of the deliverance, of the yoke broken, burdens destroyed. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let's partake with joy tonight. Hallelujah. Crucified, laid behind the storm.
Alléluia. Alléluia. What a powerful word from heaven. If you have been blessed tonight, put those hands together for Jesus. And you may please take your seats in his presence. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word in Jesus' mighty name. We shall be taking our personal supplication. And the anchor scripture, we're going to read it together. Get a little understanding and you'll be left to pray for the next four minutes. Hallelujah. Isaiah 58, 9. You know, we have been waiting upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, this was coming from the story of the type of fasting that the Lord desired. And he said, when you do that type of fasting, which I believe you have done because we have learned about it over and over. He said, then when you call, the Lord will answer. Yes, I am here. He will quickly reply. How many of us want that answer tonight? For God to say, yes, I am here, he will quickly reply. Remove the heavy yoke of oppression. Stop pointing your finger and spreading vicious rumors. That will not be our testimony, the last part in Jesus' mighty name. But let's take that part to art, the first part. And let us rise on our feet or take any position we want to take and begin to lay those things that you have on your hand, that situation, that issue, whatever it is that you have come to God with tonight, you have not come to seek him in vain. What that thing is, he is ready to answer tonight. He said, when you call, he will answer. Yes, I am here. And we know he's in this house. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. There shall be holiness. And... My people, that is the people of Jacob, shall possess their possessions. So you are possessing possessions. There are solutions given to you. When you call, he hears. So let's lay those issues out to God. Those online do the same thing. Whatever you have brought to seek the face of God tonight, whatever issue it is, as someone threatened you at the place of your work, bring it to God. As an issue made you invalid in any way, bring it to God. As an issue, become an issue of mockery or long continuance in your life, bring it to God today. He will hear you. He said, I am here. I am here. I am here. That is what God is saying to you today. I am here. I am here. I am here. So speak out to him. We heard in that message today, Elisha asked, ask, 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 don't keep quiet. Father, this is my supplication. Father, this is what I've come to you tonight. You said you are here. Hear me, hear me. I need answers to this. I need ideas to do this. What shall I do, Lord? Rakalabro shantayagados. Let's power through in the spirit, pray in the spirit, push through in the spirit. Whatever supplication you have lifted before him, 
even begin to pray in the spirit. The Holy Spirit will give you utterance. Rando shata yagada. I kalabrush. Rante susala kribo shata. Li kabro hande hi kada. Le kro brata suse. Ri kato suse. Ma kabros. For no one know where the mind of God bear the spirit. Let's push. Let's power through in the spirit. E krata sataya. There is a spirit in man. And inspiration of the almighty. Ma kabrota. Give it understanding. Rando shataya. There is an answer you are looking for. The spirit of the Lord will give it to you. Akratasu sete yagados. Father, we thank you. Let's give God praise. Thank him for answered prayers. For this is the confidence we have in him. That when we pray according to his will, which we have done tonight, because we prayed according to the word, he will hear and he will answer. And he has done what we have asked. Because he will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Father, we thank you. Or even imagine. To you alone be all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Put those beautiful friends together for Jesus and please take your seat. To move this service forward, it is offering time. It is offering time. It is that time in the service that we bring out our tithes, our offering, worship offering our first fruits, seeds, or any financial commitment to God, thanksgiving offering, my prophet offering, or if you are giving towards the building project, or also if you are giving towards the Total Woman Conference 2021. I thought someone would be excited about that. Please, if you have given any pledge and you want to be giving, them, giving it instrumentally, that is also acceptable. You don't have to give it out all once. Plan where. So if you want to give any part of it now, just put it and label it TTWC. Hallelujah. And the Lord will bless you for whatever you are giving tonight in the name of Jesus. Let's quickly read from Genesis 8.22. As long as the earth remains, there will be planting and harvest. He said, seed time and harvest time shall not seed cold and eat summer and winter day and night hallelujah so as you sow your seed harvest follows hallelujah and we just learned about service you can also serve god with your seed there was a man peter he served god all he did was serving jesus with his boat and look at what happened next. not only did he have a boat because that's what we focus on encounter but his destiny changed forever a couple of minutes later, Jesus said, I will not only make you a catcher of fish, I will make you a fisher of men. Destiny changing giving. That is what you receive tonight in the name of Jesus. With that understanding, and if you have done that, for those of us online, please, please go to our website www.joyoverflow.church and you could give through that or send an e-transfer to joyoverflowchurch at gmail.com. They are showing on the screen. You can quickly do that and raise up your device that you are using to give. Those of us online, please honor God, rise on your feet and raise up that offering to God, your envelope, well labeled and begin to speak to him. You have heard that scripture. You have heard the service aspect of it. Say, God, I have brought this in service to you. This is my resources. This is my tithe. And you are covenant keeping God. Whatever you are tying to that seed, whatever you are tying to your offering, whatever you are tying to your tithe, speak to your father. This is your opportunity. In the next 60 seconds, do that. Father, I return this to say I honor you. I worship you. This is an offering of honor to you alone be all that glory. I thank you because out of the many that you have given to me, Father, I have brought this to worship you. Accept it, O Lord, and let your name be glorified forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Let's cast our offering rejoicing, for God loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the
Father, the covenant keeping God, will return these tithes, these offerings, these seeds to you in honor in the name of Jesus. And because you're a covenant keeping God, we ask you, Lord, to bless every giver and Father, satisfy the desires of our heart. And at the end of the day, let this just be a precursor to what you are doing in our life that will return again in the next service, O oh Lord, to testify of the results, testimonies that emanated from this giving. When Peter gave his boat, Lord, you did not only give him a catch of his life, you change his destiny forever. Lord, let destinies begin to change now to your glory and the praise of your name according to your word. And take all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Hallelujah. You may please have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. It is that time in the service that we also welcome those who are worshiping with us for the first time. We know and we believe that the Lord is bringing in the hundreds of thousands. And some of you are online today. We want you to just give us a thumbs up if this is your first time at Joy Overflow International Church joining us for an online service like this. If you are online, we also want to recognize you and welcome you. Hallelujah. If you are online, quickly go to our website www.joyoverflow.church complete the prayer request form with all your details so that we'll get in touch with you and also pray with you. Most importantly if you have a prayer request or prayer point or any burden even after this service, please write it down and we'll be praying with you and we'll believe that next time you join us, you shall come back with your testimonies because our God is a prayer answering God. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us. God bless you and join us again in Jesus' mighty name. This church, Joy Overflow International Church. I thought someone is excited about the work of God. It's soon becoming a place of worship for the hundreds of thousands. What must we do? Let's watch out, take our place, and be ready for what God is already doing in our midst. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's remain focused on peace, love, and joy. And maintain zero tolerance for strife. Strife will not be found in our midst in Jesus' mighty name. With Jesus' joy, let's rise on our feet as we work on God's servant. Um, just remember Sunday is communion service this coming Sunday is communion service for the month uh, let's be here let's invite our friends and uh, the glory of God is coming down upon us mightily in the name of Jesus today is the last day of the month of March and the last day of the first quarter of this year are you excited? Lift up your hands, give him glory. Just wave it to him in the name of Jesus Christ. So this next quarter, we'll be opening it up by prayer and fasting. Three days marathon prayer and fasting. Uh, April the 7th to 9th, let's be ready. It's going to be the most amazing time of our life as we go before God, opening up the quarter in the name of Jesus Christ. Miracles, signs, wonders, open doors, all manner of breakthroughs await you in this next quarter in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And remember on Friday, we are praying together from what time? 11 p.m. to 12.30 a.m. It's going to be an awesome time. Uh, and then join the daily prayer chain. How many of us don't belong to a daily prayer chain? Is there anyone here you don't join any group of people? Okay. To pray uh, daily prayer chain. Who else? Let me see the hands up. Yeah, she raised her hands up, right? Okay, good. Uh, anybody upstairs? No daily prayer chain. Okay, so join the Friday daily prayer chain. Friday daily prayer chain. The Friday leader is not even interested. I will give you to another group right now. Huh? I, we should give out to Thursday. You, huh? Thursday. You see, you are not even interested. 
You don't even know who it is. Huh? Don't worry. We we'll leave on Friday. Uh-uh. <laughs> so join Friday daily prayer chain. We pray together one hour, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. every day. The phone number is 587 400 8496. The leader will connect with you after now and then invite you to join them in that prayer. It's going to be an awesome time. Do you notice that in all our daily prayer chain, we have testimonies of the faithfulness of God. And there we connect in a community. We support ourselves. We stand by ourselves. We speak to ourselves. You are asked to bring a word. You are asked to lead a prayer. That's training you, making you strong. So belong to a daily prayer chain. If there's anyone online who doesn't belong to a daily prayer chain, please contact uh, Pastor Jude after now. Pastor Jude will be partial. Because we are conversing for Friday. Friday. Please be very impartial. <laughs> so distribute them evenly. Okay, so if you are online and you are not in any daily prayer chain, please contact Pastor Jude and then he will distribute you. Into, so the next one is to start from Monday. Huh? There is a reason why I started from Friday. Because the last time was Thursday. Now this is Friday. So we will start again from Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Hallelujah. <laughs> God bless you. Shall we all rise up, lift up our hands? Are you blessed tonight? Let's give glory to God for his faithfulness. Uh, you have received the power to serve, the power to serve. And because you can see the reward, the reward is so rich. Thank you. Thank him for the power to serve. Lord, I will serve you all the days of my life in any unit that I'm, I'm privileged to join. I will serve you. Those of us who are online, please join a service unit. Please join a service unit. We have many of them. We have the drama, we have the prayer, we have the ushers, we have the hospitality, we have the children's church, we have so many of them. The finance team, join them and God's name will be glorified in your life in the name of Jesus. As you go tonight, there is someone here, you are lined up for a miracle. Between now and Sunday, a miracle at work, a miracle in school, a miracle on the street you live. A miracle in your career. A miracle in your finances. A miracle in your marriage. In the name of Jesus. I can hear debt right off. I don't know who that is. Somebody's debt will be written off. Somebody's debt is set to be written off. If that's you, shall that's me. I see another open door for somebody here. I don't know who that is, but if that's you, say that's me. Open doors to the right, to the left. The doors will never be shut forever in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Take all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Brethren, a lot of wonderful things are happening in our midst today. Mama and I went to dedicate a house for one of us to the glory. Brand new house to the glory of God. Yours is the next to be dedicated. I said, yours is the next to be dedicated in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. With Jesus' joy tonight, shall we together share the covenant. Let God will show me the part of life. For in his presence is the fullness of my joy. And at his right hand are my players forevermore. Peace, love, and joy. Turn to somebody else to share with them my glory. Is here. No loss, no pain, no shame. Turn to somebody else and reassure them my glory is here. No loss, no pain, no shame. You will never see loss, pain, or shame forever in Jesus' name. Shall we take our covenant song tonight? Joy overflows in my heart.